Okay, so here is our uh, practice exam. So this is going to be uh, part one of the video. And so what we've done here is we have calculated a confidence interval based on a sample size of n equals 100. And now we want to get a better estimate with a margin of error that is only one fourth as large. So you're looking at 0.25 as large. How does our how large does our new sample need to be? Well, they give us four choices here, right? So or five, sorry. So they give us five choices here. So the idea is if we know what the margin of error is, and it's a formula, all right? So that's M E, right, equals Z star times the standard deviation. And of course, that's just z star times the square root of p1 minus p all over n. Well, the idea here is um, I can choose a z star and a p, and then all I need left are to uh, plug in n's. All right? So so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to switch over to the calculator, right? So here's my here's my handy dandy calculator. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose 2 as my z star, right? And I'm going to take the square root of, okay? And I'm just going to choose something easy, 0.5. Okay? And the reason I'm going to do that is cuz I'm going to multiply it by 0.5, right? Cuz if I go over here uh, and then divide that by well, I just got to divide that by n. Well, that's 100. Okay? And I hit enter. And I get 0.1. Okay? So I need something that's one quarter as large as 0.1. Right? I need something a quarter of that. So 0.25 times 0.1. Hey, it's 0 0.025. So I'm going to plug in each one of these. Right? I'm going to plug in each one of these values until I get 0 0.025. All right, so let's try 25. So 2, right, times the square root of 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 25. And I hit enter. Whoa, that's, that's bigger, not smaller, right? So that's not that number, so I keep going. So 2 uh, times the square root of 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 1,600. And I hit enter. Holy crap, those two numbers match. All right, so those two numbers match, so the 1600 must be the sample size that I need. So the correct answer here is B, right? <clears throat> All right, so now, oh crap. A manager of an orchard expects about 70% of his apples to exceed the weight requirement for the grade A designation. So this 70% right here, this is like my P. My P is expected to be 0.7. All right, at least how many apples must be sampled to be 90% confident of estimating the true proportion? So 90% confident is gonna go with a Z star of of 1.64 and this is on a table that I'll give you okay so you don't have to worry about that alright so I want my margin of error to be equal to 4% right 0 0.04 so that's coming from here I want a 4% margin of error okay so again I'm just gonna have my Z star well, Z star is 0 0.164, 0 0.164. And here, uh, I know that my proportion is 0 0.7. So I have 0 0.7 times 1 minus 0 0.7 here. And now what I need are N's to plug in here. Oh, dang. All right. So that's these. I just need to start plugging in these, these N's to figure out uh, which one is going to be the best. Now, I'm not an idiot. Okay, um, to, to be 90% confident, I need a pretty big sample size. So I'm thinking this guy, this guy, and this guy are probably out. So I'm going to save them for last. So I'm going to focus on the 505 and the 356. Okay, and I'm pretty much just going to go in order from left to right. <clears throat> so let's see. 
I've got uh, 1.64 uh, times the square root of 0.7 times 1 minus 0.7 uh, divided by 505 and I hit enter and I get 3% margin of error oh that's a 3% margin of error that's pretty close so what about the 356 then all right so let's take 1.64 multiply that by the square root of 0.7 times 1 minus 0.7 all divided by 356 and hit enter well holy crap look that rounds to four right there and so that my friends is our answer all right so C is gonna give us the point zero four and look it's a multiple choice right so so plug in okay plug stuff in and see what happens no sense in doing a whole bunch of algebra this is a stats class all right so now we're looking at three. Okay, so p the p value indicates what? All right. Now remember, I told you the p value is centered on p. Okay. So the idea is, is it's the probability of the observed statistic given the null hypothesis is true because it's sitting right on P. And so the answer here is A. It's not the probability that the null hypothesis is true. Okay. That's not, that's not it. Okay. That makes me sad. That doesn't have anything to compare it to. It's not the probability of the observed statistic given that the alternative hypothesis is true. It's not centered on the alternative hypothesis. I don't even know where the alternative hypothesis is. It's just a not, right? So it can't be centered there. The probability of the alternative hypothesis. No, see, again, it's the alternative hypothesis, and I don't know anything about that. So these are big, fat, dead giveaways. And the pro probability the null is true given the observed statistic. Uh, not really okay this isn't really it this is kind of the reverse all right and so it's not the probability of the null it's the probability of the observed statistic we have to be centered in the right spot okay and so the observed statistic is what's given in relation to the null hypothesis not the null hypothesis given in relation to the observed statistic that's like backwards okay so it's got to be centered on the P. That's the big deal here. All right.